Taylor Langston, the Ken Collins era began in style last week with a 51 to nothing shutout of McMurray. We'll show you how it happened. And I'm Grant Boone. Yeah, goose egg for the War Hawks. And now the Cats prepare for a hog calling as the Havilinas of Texas A&M Kingsville come to town. The Ken Collins Show starts right now. Welcome to week two of the Ken Collins Show with the coach and ACU senior Taylor Langston. I'm Grant Boone. Coach, congratulations on a big win over McMurray in your season debut, 51 to nothing last week. Rumor has it, one of my moles within the team tells me that on the sideline last Saturday night, the butterflies were rolling. You were a little bit nervous. True or false? Well, <laughs> it was like drastically different being the head coach so but I, so I appreciate you uh, recognizing that but yeah I would have to challenge the maybe the credibility of some of your inside sources That's just fair. off the cuff but yes it was different uh, a totally different feel you know than anything I've ever experienced before just having to make different calls and being in charge of the whole thing but it was good mm. well I mean it was a game of first to say it was your first game as the head coach it was McMurray's first game as a division two school but now we're opening up conference play mm. and Kingsville is going to be pretty tough. What are you thinking about so far? Well, I'm just hoping we slow them down a little bit. They've got some really good players on offense, explosive players on offense, and defensively, they're always in the top part of the uh, of our of our league. They're going to they're going to stop the run, and they've got athletic de uh, defensive backs, so should be interesting. Well, we'll preview that Kingsville game, and we'll talk a lot more about what's happening around the rest of ACU sports world. But when we come back. We'll look back at that 51 nothing route of McMurray last Saturday night. This is the Ken Collins Show. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show. Big night out at Shotwell Stadium last Saturday night for the season opener. 51 nothing to win over McMurray. Here's Taylor Langston with a look at the highlights. Shark making it look easy. Jogs into the end zone untouched to open up the floodgates in this shutout. Demarcus Thompson on the diving catch, and Travis Tarver makes a name for himself early. The red shirt freshman finished up with two touchdowns on Saturday. Taylor Gabriel showing off a little bit with the reception downfield, turning right around to take the rock in on foot, showing a little versatility. Transfer Marcel three, taking 12 for the team. One of his touchdown runs right there. And whatever new defensive coordinator Darian Doolin has been doing, it was working for the Cats on Saturday. The D putting up some pretty brutal numbers against the Warhawks, including nine sacks on McMurray quarterback Jake Mullen. Ryan Smith saying no sir to Mullen right there as he bats down a pass. And Angel Lopez wanting to take a little souvenir for himself, intercepting this pass in the fourth quarter. Defense only gave up 300 all-purpose yards, and the purple was just swarming McMurray's offense, even forcing a fumble. And you can't open a season with better style than sophomore defensive end Nick Richardson. Richardson was named the Defensive Player of the Week by the Lone Star Conference after tying ACU record for most sacks in a single game. Six of the nine sacks were courtesy of Richardson, but the way that he sees it, it's just the beginning of what is expected to be a long season of more hard-hitting football. I'm more comfortable with my hand in the ground. It uh, gives me a better ball, get off and everything. I like it. O-line did a great job. Tight ends, put in work, fullbacks, did a great job. We stress preparation all week, so it really feels good to go out here and show out in front of the fans. Well, that's a big one. Coach, congratulations. 51 nothing. I mean, however you get the win in your first game, it would have been great, but this is what's great. We get to talk about the 51 and the nothing, because both are important. And let's start with the nothing, because it's the first shutout for an ACU team since 2006. You actually had back-to-back -back that year. And... Let's talk about the guy who tied an all-time ACU record, Nick Richardson. Now, we, we saw him have a great year last year. Really did have a very solid year as, as a linebacker. And he crept up a lot to that line of scrimmage and rushed the passer. But this time, with his hand on the ground, he was dominant on Saturday night, I thought. Yeah, when you change defenses, we, like we, we go from a 3-4 to a 4-3. 
there are going to be some guys that are greater beneficiaries uh, you know, just of the of the system, mm -hmm. and he obviously is one of those guys. It was a no-brainer. Hey, let's put him at end and just let him go because he's explosive. His ball get off is is as good as you'll see at this level. Uh, he's flexible enough, upper body, lower body, to be able to decrease the surface area, and that's what you want. That's what pass rushing is about. It's not letting those big guys get their hands on you. Now, with all respect to McMurray, I mean, they do have a left tackle who was a Boston College player last year, a big fella. It, it won't be that easy every week, though, will it? And so now the challenge for Nick Richardson becomes, can you replicate? It doesn't have to be six sacks, but can you play at a high level every week? I, I would presume that would be one of the challenges. The, the, the big struggle with it, and he's still young. He's a young guy. The big struggle is how do you handle success? Mm. And... Because all these guys, all these guys on our team, they can handle adversity. We put them through adversity every day, and they 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 figure that out. But the success, you know, you get to thinking, you get to looking around and 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 trying to sack the quarterback instead of just doing your job. Mm -hmm. And that he can he can end up having not as good a game this year or uh, th this uh, um, this Saturday uh, if he doesn't if he doesn't stay focused. So for him, it's not just about keep giving me six sacks a game. It's play hard every down. It is. Occupy your space. That's hard. Isn't that hard though for players? Because everybody wants to make a highlight reel kind of play, and sometimes your job is just to be where you're supposed to be, isn't it? That's right. That's the team concept yeah. of football, and that's why when there's a long run, a lot of times it's not because the the offense did something really, really good. It's because somebody wasn't responsible for their gap, or their eyes were in the wrong place, and that's what our yeah, coach Doolin and those guys on defense they're hammering that this week and. And, uh, you know, it has to do with humility and has to do with doing your job, and our guys should be fine. One other note on the defense, LB Suggs, it, you talk about switches and guys who are in more natural positions. You know, he's been a linebacker. He's been a, a corner. He's back at safety as he was a couple of years ago. That seems to be a good spot for him, and he was dominant, I thought, again on Saturday night. You know, he, you can put LB anywhere, and he's going he's gonna to do well simply because he has a football knack. His mm -hmm. football intelligence is, is high. Uh, whether he was at corner, he made plays at corner, yeah, he but he's a natural safety. And in our defense, the safeties run the show back there. They're making checks, they're ID and formations and personnel, mm -hmm. and he's able to do that really well. And he's constantly around the ball. And when you're able to do that, in, as far as your intelligence, get people in the right spots, and you play hard and run to the ball every snap, when there's a ball on the ground, you're going to be close. And that's why he recovers fumbles all the time. Yeah, he forced a fumble when the that's game right. was 0 0, and the ball wound up being recovered by Nick Finney uh, inside the red zone for McMurray. And your team went on to score and never looked back. Okay, let's talk about the 51, because that was pretty good, too. And you get a couple of touchdowns each from two guys playing in their first game as a Wildcat. You have the redshirt freshman from McKinney, Travis Tarver, and you also get Marcel Threat, a transfer from the University of Central Arkansas, your alma mater. And what do you think about both of those guys plus Sharkandrick West? I thought both of those guys played well, didn't play close to as good as they will mm -hmm. this year. But the main thing is, is they valued the football. You can tell, uh, you can tell when they were being tackled, they, they protected the ball. And that's the number one thing. When you know it, when you can see a running back is ready, you'll see him protecting the ball, moving his feet on contact and running through blocks and, and falling forward on tackles. And those guys did. Mitch Gale, uh, career low 60s percentage in terms of completion percentage. He was around 67 percent, 19 of 28 the other night for 290 some odd yards. A touchdown, which extends his touchdown streak all the way back to 2009. He did throw the one pick. Overall, your assessment of how Mitch played? I thought Mitchell did well. I thought he managed what we were doing. We knew we were going to see some crazy stuff. Joe Lee Dunn, <laughs> that's what he does. And our first quarter was was indicative of that. Uh, you know, we we, we spent we spit and sputtered. Some of that was self-inflicted. That was like, okay, we're we don't we're better than that. But, uh, but again, in the second in the second quarter, we had 230 yards in the second quarter, and a lot of that is him just being the general, IDing the defense, running, throwing, throwing strikes, throwing the ball away when he should have. There are a couple of calls that I made uh, simply from being on the sideline. I didn't have a good view of it, and he bailed me out just with an incompletion. So some of that's good. You know, uh, as I look at the wide receivers. Uh, you know, we talk about some of the guys coming back this year, like Taylor Gabriel, who had a touchdown catch and a touchdown run on a wide receiver end around. There were no drops by your wide receivers. It was one drop by a, a running back, Tarver. I thought the wide receivers played pretty solid the other night. What did you think? I thought they played solid. They weren't quite as sharp as we want them at the top of their routes, 
but they caught the ball well. Two of them had really good catches. Yeah. Demarcus Thompson had a freaky catch on on their sideline. I, I was I, I'd struggle calling the next play because I was like, wow, that was that was cool. That was third and fifteen, and he got sixty That's on right. that play. And then one last thing about the offensive line. We talked about last week on the the season debut of this show. You got some guys in new places and some new faces. What'd you think about the line? I thought they did well blocking the different looks. Uh, that McMurray gave us, uh, you know, in the first quarter that was tough, and we had to make some adjustments. But then af after the first quarter, uh, we got them over there and figured it out. And uh, Coach Collins, our, our offensive line coach, figured that out, and uh, and they did well. They protected well mm -hmm. against constant blitz, and uh, we were able to run the ball. Anytime you can you can protect against all out blitz, and you can run the ball when you want to, you're you're, you're set up for a good recipe there. 51-0, the final score. We've got more on the King Collins Show when we come back right after this. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show. Now that we've seen how the football team handled its season opener, it's time to check out who else got the ball rolling on campus. Here's Matthew Sloan and Jimmy Isbell with more ACU Sports. Hi, welcome to the JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Jimmy Isbell. And I'm Matthew Sloan. The ACU golf team will hit the links for the first time in the 2012 season carrying with them hefty expectations. ACU will be looking for a chance at Nationals, and they have the players to do it. The 13th ranked Wildcats will return eight golfers to a team with enough experience to win any tournament they enter. Head coach Mike Campbell has a lot of faith in his veteran squad heading into the season. Got a real solid team coming back, everybody back from last year actually. And uh, right now our national rankings number 13 in the golf world, uh, Nike golf world poll. And uh, just looking forward to getting the season kicked off and looking forward to an exciting year. Ranked number seven in the Lone Star Conference, the ACU volleyball team comes off a fresh start this past weekend after placing first at the Hilltopper Rattler Classic at St. Edwards and St. Mary's Universities. Among the highlights, Sarah Oxford, last year's LSC Freshman of the Year, was selected to the Hilltopper Rattler Classic All-State Tournament team based on her remarkable play. As the weekend approaches, the team will be in Denver, Colorado for the Colorado Premier Challenge, D2's most prestigious volleyball tournament. They have the possibility of playing number five, Central Missouri, who eliminated ACU in last year's NCAA postseason, as well as number one and five-time defending national champion, Concordia St. Paul. The cross-country team will be run by a new head coach. Earlier this week, Chris Ward grabbed the reins of a talented cross-country team that will be very competitive in the Lone Star Conference this season. Ward has been in Abilene for less than a week, but already has big plans for his runners in 2012. Yeah, I'm passionate about this sport. I love it. You know, it was, it's, it's good to be back um, coaching again. Um, I was off for a year, and, and it just basically killed me, uh, burning me up inside. But it's just a joy and relief to, to be here talking with you guys about cross country and track, and I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed with joy and excitement right now. After coming off an undefeated regular season, the ACU women's soccer team is favored to win the LSC title in 2012. Led by captains Julie Coppage, Lexi Sterling, and Ariel Moncure, the Cats look great with J.C. Ferrara, Andrea Carpenter, and Bree Bushman returning to the field. The team will be playing this weekend against Nebraska Kearney and Missouri Southern and Joplin, Missouri. One of the goals of our team is is to take it one game at a time, and it's really easy to get ahead of yourself and, and only think um, about the end of the road, but um, we have a lot of, of difficult teams on our schedule this year, and, and we know that it's extremely important to take it one game at a time. For the JMC Network Sportscast, I'm Matthew Sloan. And I'm Jimmy Isbell. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. There may not be as many returnees to the football team, but there's certainly no shortage of talent. Last Saturday, many players went from unknown to unforgettable. Justin Stevens, Travis Tarver, Cy Wilson, all players who have flown under the radar, but will quickly become names to remember. And how could we forget the new offensive tackle, Will Latu, an OU verbal commit who finds his way into purple and white. Here's Brands Armstrong with a look at these newcomers. Number 36, Cy Wilson, is back for the 2012 season after being a red shirt last year. Wilson started the season off right at the McMurray opener with a total of five tackles. Travis Tarver made his ACU debut against the McMurray Warhawks and became an instant powerhouse with 37 rushing yards and 54 receiving yards. Tarver also contributed two ACU touchdowns in the shutout game. 
Number 20, Justin Stevens from Keller, opened the season with eight solo tackles and three assists for a total of 11 tackles for the Wildcats season opener against the Warhawks. You know, I learned a lot last year playing behind Thor and uh, Derek Odalusi, and I learned a lot from those older guys, and coach did a good job working me in in the middle of the year to give me some reps for this next coming year, and you know, it's it, I think it will end up helping me because you know I've been out there playing with the big with the big boys. Offensive tackle Will Latu from St. Petersburg, Florida, joined the Wildcats one week into fall training camp. Latu was a verbal commit to the University of Oklahoma and is expected to be a dominating force this year for the Cats. I believe that I bring that more experience, older role to the team. Um, not only that, to the offensive line, and prayed on it, and I guess this was the answer. And I feel comfortable with it. I'm excited about it, and I uh, just want to continue to keep growing. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show. Let's take a look at the Lone Star Conference schedule for this Saturday, the second Saturday of the season. And you've got a couple of LSC schools on the road at Division I teams. Commerce is at UT San Antonio. And, and you see that Incarnate Word is playing San Houston State. The only other Lone Star Conference matchup coach is Midwestern State at Tarleton State. The Texans, for a second straight year, get a tough opening draw. That's right. They're opening with the defending champs uh, Midwestern this year. Last year they opened with us. We were the defending champs, so they've got a uh, they've got a tough gig here two years in a row. And of course, it's ACU hosting Texas A&M Kingsville. This is a rivalry coach that has gone in spurts. It seemed like a couple of generations went by without ACU able to beat the Javelinas. But since 2004, your team has come out on top. When you look back at the group of games that you've played the last few years since you've been here in 2005, what do you think about when you think about the Javelinas? Well, I think, first of all, uh, about us, we, we always play well against them. We, if you look back in the past, we don't, we don't turn the ball over against them, and we're, we're very efficient, even third downs. We end up being in a lot of third downs, but we convert most of them. And uh, so the first thing I think of is of that our guys are ready, and they're, you know, they're pretty fired up to play against the Javelinas because every year they show up with really good players. And uh, so it and it and it's never a blowout. It's always it always comes down to the to the last part of the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah well, let's talk about the Havelina's offense. I mean, you've got Jonathan Woodson coming back. He's a senior this year. He scored all but one of their touchdowns last year. What is going to have to click for the defense in this game the way that it did against McMurray in order for us to come out on top? Well, he he went off last year, and it was you know in the box. I'm rooting against the guy, but. Those were some impressive runs and, and catches that he made, and, and he's a he's a great player. He's got elite speed, and but our guys know this, and it starts with our defensive front. We're going to compress the running lanes, make him bounce it, and then and then make plays. Because if you keep him going sideways, he he can't score. Uh, if you give him a clean shot downhill on your safeties, then that's that gets that gets tough. Unfair fight. That's right. Well, he went. Uh, off with 228 yards, and then the next February he won the indoor Division II 200 meter dash. He actually went for 218 meters against us, 228 right. yards rushing, two 80 plus yard touchdowns, and a 60 yard touchdown receiving. Coach Jonathan Woodson is far from a one man show. They've got Sherman Batiste, they've got Robert Armstrong, they've got a transfer from Boston College, Clyde Lee at the wide receiver positions, and they've got a senior quarterback. And Nate Popple, we saw two years ago. He didn't play last year because of injury. So it's not just Woodson, is it? No, it's not. Uh, Popple's he can he he's he's a seasoned guy. He's been there, done that. He's 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 competed at a high level. And when you throw in all these these receivers and athletes around him, I'm getting a little nervous right now. But we'll <laughs> I think we'll I think we'll do fine. Okay. Well, last year we were in Kingsville. It's not exactly a short drive, but now you're going to get to play. Uh, you're going to get to play a &M Kingsville at home. How does that change um, sort of having the home field advantage, getting to go up against um, the Javelinas tonight? Well, I, I don't mind going down there other than the long trip because it is a great atmosphere down there. We actually had to go down there two times in a row, which is a little unfair from our commissioner, but he doesn't really care what we think. Um, but we play well when we're down there, and, and I, I expect the same thing here. I would, if, if I could vote for the trip or – no trip, I would play them out here at Shotwell, and I think, I think we'll do well. Coach, going into this game tonight, you'll be a little bit short-handed. Chris Summers, linebacker, in that 51 nothing win over McMurray last week, was injured. He won't play. And Sharkhandrick West is a little bit of a question mark as well, right? 
That's right. Chris is out. Hurt his knee. Uh, very unfortunate with him. It was a non-contact deal. Just got his uh, foot hung in the hung in the turf, and that's kind of what happens at times. Uh, Shirkandrick West has a has a bad growing. He's he's he, we expect him to play a little bit, but not much. Yeah. So uh, Taylor, it really comes down to can that ACU defense, that new look defense, hang in there with the powerful Kingsville offense. Right. And something that I'm looking forward to seeing is um, how you're going to sort of change up the defense that you've been working. Um, it's obviously different than it was last year, but are we going to see anything different from the defense this, this game than we did last week against McMurray? Well, it's a totally different animal. You know, McMurray's pass, pass, pass. These guys are going to come out, and they're going to run first. And really, it looked like defending the pass is our forte, but it, but but uh, closing down those running lanes, that's what we're going to end up doing best uh, in the long term this year. So. I think it's going to be a good matchup, and it all starts with those guys up front, and if they do their job, then everything will fall into place. Last thing, Coach, Mitchell Gale against Kingsville has played better than he has against any other opponent. Mm -hmm. He's thrown for better than 1,100 yards in three games, eight touchdowns, no interceptions in those three games, averaging 370-some-odd yards per game. Why has he had so much success against the Havilleners? Well, it starts with Mitchell's preparation. Every day he shows up, he's honed in. He really studies their, the, the, the safeties, the linebackers, how to manipulate those guys with your eyes. And they're, they're an aggressive defense. They are every year, and that's why they're so good. Uh, but we use it against them a little bit, run some double moves, and Mitchell's, Mitchell's normally on point against those guys. All right, should be fun. The Havelinas and the Wildcats, 6 o'clock tonight at Shotwell Stadium. Lance Fleming and I will have the radio call on Mix 92.5 FM at 5.30 p.m., you can catch a replay of the game on Channel 40 here in Abilene at 2 o'clock on Sunday. For Taylor Langston and for the Coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll see you next week.